All right, hello students. My name is Andrea Kaikala. I'm the Executive Director of Washington Business Week and thank you for joining us for our fall speaker series presented by PEMCO Insurance. I have with me today, Jim Berrios, who has been a pillar of the Kent community for decades. Until very recently, he owned the Golden Steer Steak and Rib House for almost 22 years with his lovely wife, Suzanne. He has served in countless leadership roles, including as a member of the Kent City Council and he's currently the president of the Green River College Foundation. He also serves on the Multicare Hospital Regional Board, and he has served as the president of the Kent Chamber of Commerce. Students, I'm excited to introduce you to one of my mentors who has had a considerable influence on my career and for him to share with you as he has shared with so many around him. Thank you, Jim, for joining us. Please talk to us about your career journey. Well, thank you, Andrea. I'm, uh... Really excited about this opportunity. I've had the opportunity to share my uh, career with a number of students over the years, but um, just a little bit about my uh, journey, so to speak, is uh, I was born in Puerto Rico. At the age of seven, I moved to California. And uh, when I got into high school, I realized that I wanted to work. And so I started working for a uh, Mexican restaurant, a dishwasher. And after the first day, um, actually opening night they were very busy they had one cook and that was the chef and he got so far behind that uh, the owner looked at me and said stop washing dishes go help him and so after that first night I became his assistant and so that's how I got into cooking um, and uh, after high school I uh, moved to uh, the Newport Beach area Costa Mesa and uh, went to a two-year college down there to play football. And so I played football for the first year. And then after the season was over, I went looking for a job. I knew how to cook. So I found a Denny's off of um, one of the main streets down there and uh, went on to work for them as a graveyard cook while I was going to college. And during that time, um, it, it was a little difficult uh, working in, in uh uh, work in the graveyard shift and go to college during the day. But uh, uh, I did that for a period of time and then eventually went on to work on the swing shift. And, um, and then after about an eight, eight month period, uh, football season started again. So I quit for that period of time and uh, uh, finished the season, came back to Denny's as a waiter. And within a few months, uh, district manager came up to me and said, hey, how would you like to go into management. And so I was making a little more money as a waiter, but I thought, well, let me give this a try. Long story short, I uh, went into management and over a 19 year career with Denny's, I um, eventually became vice president of operations for Denny's. And at one point in time had half the country, 533 restaurants, if you include the franchise restaurants that I was uh, responsible for. Um, and then about 22 years ago, my wife and I decided that uh, we wanted to do something different. Um, I was traveling a lot and my kids were still young. So I decided to, uh, we decided to open a, or not open, purchase a restaurant right up the street, one mile from my driveway. And that was going to be my new uh, commute, one mile. Uh, but there was three lights. Uh, but at any rate, we uh, purchased the restaurant 22 years ago and, um, and had it for, well, nearly 22 years. And we just sold it two weeks ago. So um, that's basically it on my journey. What a, what a fun journey. And students think the job that you have now here in high school could turn into such an amazing, long and, and productive career, uh, like Jim getting in and finding his passion. Uh, uh, just right away. And so we have some questions that you guys have submitted, our, our students and teachers. We're asking the general questions to all of our speakers, and then we have some specific restaurant industry questions. So Jim, I'm going to start with our general questions. Um, and here, here goes our first one. We have, uh, is there anything that is non-negotiable for you as an entrepreneur? You know, I've always believed in this and, um, and my dad was an entrepreneur for a number of years. Um, and that is don't compromise when it comes to ethics and, and, um, and who you are. Um, that 
that makes up your reputation and it's so important that you protect your reputation. And that is a that is a common theme. And students, I don't prompt our, our speakers here, um, but you have heard from every single one of them so far that I have done that ethics and morality, that is the most important thing that you just do not uh, do not compromise. So you are seeing a theme here uh, with our um, our adult leaders. Um, so, Jim, what is the most important part of your whole business journey? Well, it's. Uh... It's the lessons learned from the failures and the many successes that we've had. Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's been um, at times a little depressing, but a lot of times exhilarating and, and, and just exciting to see that, um, that working with your team, uh, you can accomplish almost anything. That's a, a great answer, yes. And it goes right into our, our third question. I mean, this is probably my favorite that the students have submitted. Um, what were your greatest professional failures and what did they teach you? So, you know, I, I had a tough one with that one because um, you, you can't be successful unless you fail. And so, you know, you can make a, a laundry list of failures, but uh, the one thing that, that comes to mind is that um, as a business owner, you have to invest in people. And, um, and I've made some investment in, in some people that I've hired and, um, and they've, you know, they've turned out in a couple of cases, uh, to be, uh, a bad investment. Uh, but for the most part, what I've found is if you spend enough time working with somebody and, and, and trying to teach them uh, the things that you want them to learn um, and get them to understand the different perspectives, um, it, it, it makes it a very, very uh, good investment because it pays dividends down the road. And uh, that's what I've found is that, uh, you know, you can live or die by the people that you, you hire. And, um, and, you know, one of the things that I've found um, in, in learning uh, through that process is that when it comes to performance, you got to be honest with people, let them know exactly where you stand uh, and, and let them know exactly where they stand with you. And so uh, I have found that uh, uh, I've had less failures that way. That's great. And students, I think um, you heard Jim say you live or die by the, the people around you and, the, and, and who you hire. But I think that also goes to, to your friends and, and who you surround yourself with now today as, as you're developing and really being mindful of the influences that you, that you have in your, in your life. Um, so Jim, did you need to go to, do you need to go to college to work in, in your field? You don't have to, but it doesn't hurt to go to college. And, you know, there, there are so many things that you can learn um, in, in college that could help your business uh, that, and actually what I've found is that it helps things make more sense, so to speak. And, um, and so I would highly encourage you to go to college and, and at least get some business classes. And, and uh, you know, some people may choose to do um, some, uh, uh, culinary classes to learn a little bit about uh, the art of making foods. Very good. Very good. So did you do, uh, thinking back when you were in high school, we know that you, you played football. Did you do any specific extracurricular activities in high school to prepare you for your, for your job now? Well, um, you know, when it comes to uh, biz being a business owner, you, you have to be disciplined and, um, and, Sports has been my my learning experience when it came to discipline. I, I you know, in high school, I played three sports. I, I played uh, football, uh, wrestling, and track. And, and uh, so I was really, really busy. And then I was also um, part of a, um, a, sp a Spanish club class. And, um, and so that was helpful, especially in my field, because... Um, the language is, is um, uh, it, it, it's probably the prominent language in the restaurant industry is Spanish. And, and so, yeah, 
Yeah, Go Jim, ahead. tell us about learning, uh, learning Spanish. Well, like I said earlier, I, I was born in Puerto Rico and I, um, at the age of seven, I moved to California. And back then they didn't have English learning classes. Uh, so I was uh, put in the mainstream uh, education system and struggled for it a little bit. Uh, and so uh, for after a period of time, I, I started losing um, Spanish. I mean, I, I, I couldn't even put a sentence together. And then I realized that as I went into high school, they had Spanish classes. So I thought, well, let me do that. So I took Spanish and after probably two semesters, I picked it right up and then became the uh, teacher's aide on, on the, on the Spanish, uh, in the Spanish class. And then I took a couple of years in college. Oh, very good. It's, I was always so impressed when meeting uh, with Jim at his uh, restaurant, how he interacted with all of his staff and spoke, spoke their language and just that, that level of respect to, to, to communicate with, with people in, in their languages is something that's very admirable. So I know a lot of our students are, are coming in with multi uh, languages, a lot of uh, immigrants and, and refugees. Um, so just that celebration of, of that heritage that you guys as, as students have. Um, so Jim, what made you qualified to work in your industry? Was it your, your education, your work experience, uh, your professional and personal connections? Um, I think at the time, what made me qualify is the fact that I said yes. Um, you know, it, it, um, in this industry, you could start at any level. Um, but I think what, uh, really makes the difference is that, um, there's so many opportunities to grow in this industry. Uh, you can, you know, I started as a dishwasher and became a vice president of operations, uh, within a, you know, short period of time, uh, I would say. And it was because every time I had an opportunity to learn something new, I took it. And, uh, and it was free. So why not? They're paying me to learn something. And every time I had the opportunity, I took it and it just helped me get to the next level. That's so important since we know that you are so busy with your academics and your extracurricular activities, but you are again hearing a theme from our, our speakers, uh, the opportunity to, to say yes, to, to learn and grow when it is uh, presented to you. Um, so we are gonna switch over to our industry specific questions. Um, so Jim, what's the best advice you can give someone who wants to own a restaurant? Um. You know, after, God, I hate to say this, 40 plus years, um, you know, I would say do your homework um, and, and work hard um, in whatever you're, you're, you're um, uh, doing currently um, so that you, you start developing those, those work ethics. Um, but I would say that you first need to put together a business plan. You need to understand what you're getting into. Um, that business plan should include information about the uh, location, your demographics, um, who's going to be your customer base, and and think about what are you what are you going to do for a menu, um, and uh, you know, and and as you build that menu, make sure that you put together uh, what I would call a portion guide. Um, you need to establish establish. Uh, your need for staffing. How much staffing do you need? Are you going to put together training programs? Because you need to make sure that your staff is well trained. You only get one chance at this. Um, and that is when you open the doors, when people walk in, that is the impression that they're going to get. Uh, as soon as they walk in those doors, they have an impression of you. And you want to make sure that every impression, when I do this, that's the shutter opening on a camera. That's old school. Um, <laughs> and that's, giving you that picture and you want every one of those pictures to be impressive and create a positive impression in, in your customer's mind as they're walking through your business and um, experiencing uh, the customer service from the staff and the food from the uh, kitchen. Uh, so you, you, you just need to make sure that you, uh, you have a business plan that makes sense. Make sure that you have a financial plan. Um, you, you, you know, you, Another thing that a lot of people don't realize is um, the human resource 
aspect of um, any business is so important. Um, and that is knowing how to deal with employees. You know, in our re industry, the restaurant industry, it's really a simple uh, industry in that people come in and they want to have food. So they come in, you see them down, server walks up there, takes their order, gives it to the cook, the cook cooks it and you bring it out. What makes it more challenging though, is the people that work in the industry. Uh, you know, you have different personalities and some things um, sometimes don't go right for certain people and, and they can turn the whole operations upside down. And so you got to learn how to work with people and, and encourage them and, 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 um, and develop them and, and know what it takes to make them uh, the best person that they can be in your establishment. So uh, the HR side is, is very important and um, you need to learn how to negotiate. Um, you have to have good negotiating skills, whether it's uh, uh, you're dealing with a, a lease or dealing with your vendors, you, you, you have to learn that. Uh, so there's a lot of work that, that needs to be done. And my recommendation would be, before you, you say, I'm gonna open or, or uh, buy a restaurant, work in one for a period of time and, and then take every opportunity to learn all aspects of that business if the owner is willing to show you. That is, that is so true. So you touched on um, the HR and the vendors. Uh, being a, a restaurant owner, yes, is just not about just serving, serving the food. Um, were there any other marketing, advertising, PR? Really, you become that jack of all trades. Uh, is that correct, Jim? That is correct. And, you know, um, you have to learn as much as you can. You brought up marketing. That, that's so important. Um, but, you know, your best marketing is your people. Um, if you have a restaurant that delivers good food, uh, good service, in a clean environment, people are going to recognize that and they're going to tell other people. But, you, you know, you can learn marketing on the Internet. You can go to classes on marketing. But you got to make sure that your people know how to deliver good food um, and, and service and in a clean environment. Those three things. So you definitely touched on our, our, our next question. Um, how do you stand out from, from your competition? Um, is there a secret formula? I'm guessing no. But <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the people. That's how you stand out. You, you have to do it through the people that work with you. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're so proud to be able to say that um, I think it was, we, it just now became 14 years in a row we were voted best family restaurant in Kent uh, by the Kent Reporter newspaper uh, four years in a row and uh, 14 years in a row. Sorry about that. Um, and so it was, um, it, you know, as you think about that, it really becomes part of your reputation. And, uh, you know, after two years, three years, four years, um, there, there comes a lot of pressure with that. And so, um, you know, we constantly worked with the staff and encouraged them to uh, keep doing a great job because we're getting recognized. But uh, we, we, we were able to do that for 14 years in a row. That is, that is fantastic. This is, I think, going to be a little harder, uh, harder question because this is going to change year after year whenever the student decides to get into the, the restaurant industry. But uh, here's when they wanted to know, how much money do, uh, do you need to start a restaurant? Well, you know, it, it really depends on the location and, um, uh, you know, and the, and the question now becomes, are you looking to own the land? Are you looking to um, lease the building? Um, you know, there, there's a lot of issues there that you, you got to consider. Um, it, it, you know, you you're gonna probably need to work with a banker unless your parents are filthy rich. And, uh, um, but you know, you can, you can get in as low as a hundred thousand uh, dollars, but it could be 3 million plus if you're, uh, depending on where you're at and what, you, what you're looking to do. Very good. So do you need to go to culinary school to have a successful restaurant? So, 
I would say um, the answer is no, but it doesn't hurt for you to learn about the art of making food. Um, and, you know, a lot of that really depends on what type of restaurant you're looking to uh, open. Um, you know, if, if it's a, uh, a, a burger restaurant, uh, burger and fries and hot dogs, and, you know, I don't know the culinary school is really going to help you. You can probably just get it on the internet for, for about 20 minutes and figure that out. But, uh, but if you're looking to do something special, uh, then yes, it wouldn't hurt you to go to culinary uh, school, but um, make sure that you pay attention not only to the culinary uh, side of the, the, the classroom, it's also the, the business side of the um, uh, side of the uh, classroom that should pay, you should pay close attention to. Okay. So a lot of our presenters are being asked questions on how they've handled uh, the pandemic and, and COVID-19. Obviously, we're doing this speaker series not with you students, but we're doing it on Zoom, just like you're going to the classroom. Our, our world is so very different. So, Jim, how did you handle social distancing restrictions in your restaurant? Well, the first thing that we did is um, we closed the restaurant down for a period of time and then brought the staff in and we totally um, stripped the, the back kitchen, scrubbed every single wall, uh, redid the floors, replaced some walls. Um, we did a lot of work in the kitchen and then, um, and then it, you know, we made it look brand new, so to speak, and it's an old restaurant. Uh, we did the same thing in the bar um, and all the dining rooms, we stripped every, um, um, well, in the, in, the, in the bar, we stripped every wallpaper in there and repainted it. And we gave it a, a, a different look. And then uh, in the dining rooms, we cleaned every single wall twice and, and picture frame and anything that we had hanging and um, uh, really did a good job of sanitizing it. And then we created these um, um, uh, spots where people could stand in the lobby and also... Uh, separated the tables so that they were at least six feet apart. Um, and, uh, and once people started walking in on June 11th is when we reopened, um, they could clearly see that there was a difference here. And they could see that the staff was wearing their mask, uh, that they were um, constantly wiping things down on, on the tables and and uh, the, t the doors were constantly being cleaned. So they, they could see that we were making an earnest effort to make sure that people were safe. And it does help to see that uh, once you start walking in the restaurant, you'll see this big sign that says, uh, by the um, King County Health Inspector, that says, excellent rating. Perfect. So that um, our next question is about convincing customers that it's safe to eat in the restaurant during the pandemic. But I think that's just in general, in restaurants in general, you just uh, touched on the King County Health Inspection. Can you tell us about that process and, and what it takes uh, to the regulations in, in the industry? Yes. You know, and this is something you have to take extremely um, serious when it comes to uh, food safety, because all it takes is one employee to miss one step and create a situation where people get sick. And so uh, I think I mentioned earlier, make sure that you have training programs and those training programs should include food safety. And, and, and you know, there shouldn't be any compromise when that, uh, when you think about that. Uh, but if you look at what our ratings have been for years, um, we've been rated excellent. And that's because I'm, uh, I, I've always been pretty strict when it comes to food safety. And so um, I think that um, uh, when you walk into our restaurant and you get that plate in front of you and you see that the food is hot um, and that uh, it's well presented, um, that kind of tells you the story there and, and, and it makes you comfortable in eating that food. 
Definitely. So we've touched on so many uh, different aspects of uh, being in the restaurant industry. Students, you can see that it's not just about getting behind a grill or an oven and creating beautiful uh, pieces of uh, edible art, I guess. It is more uh, the HR, the training, um, the ordering. Uh, there's so much. It's a, a jack of all trades kind of um industry to be in and a fun and exciting one jim is there any other um knowledge that you'd like to impart on our students who are who are thinking about going into the, the restaurant industry that we didn't touch on yeah i, I want to go back to a, a couple of points and that is um and, and this is something that i've i've taught students in a class that i've done and andrea you've seen the class that i've done for actually over a thousand students and it's called how to go about finding a job, your first job and then keeping it. And one of the things that I talk about is that uh, make sure that you're working hard um, as you're working and don't be that type of employee that you're working hard when you're being uh, supervised or when you're being observed. Uh, I, I look at it like this. They're looking to see if anybody's watching them work and you don't wanna be that person. You wanna be uh, that person that's constantly working hard because it's the right thing to do, but also um, make sure that you put yourself around uh, people at work that are good examples and that are willing to teach you um, what they know. And I, I've said it already today, um, any time you get the opportunity to learn something different, take, take the opportunity to learn it. Um, if you're going to be an entrepreneur in the restaurant industry, uh, one of the things that I've learned a long time ago is, you know, take one employee and teach them two or three different jobs. Cross train them is what I look at it because it helps you save money on labor and it helps their development, but uh, it gives you an opportunity to maybe utilize them as a server for a period of time and then all of a sudden your kitchen's backed up and they know how to cook so you put them back there and have them cook some food for you and you don't have to call somebody in for seven hours to help you cook um, when you only needed it for 15 20 minutes that is great great advice uh, uh, for our students definitely um, with that, thank you so much, Jim, for, for joining us, for, for talking to our students and, and our teachers. Thank you to PEMCO Insurance for sponsoring the fall speaker series, and we hope that you will join us again uh, next week for the next release of uh, speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Bye.